the first question goes actually that what got you into metal music at first and when do you recall hearing metal for the first time? I heard uh, metal for the first time when I was um, uh, a kid, 10, 11, 12 years old. And I had a cousin that was really into Iron Maiden, Metallica, uh, Manowar, um, the Beastie Boys. Okay. And uh, it was a wide range of bands like that. And for me, it meant nothing. It was noise. At the time, I was playing piano. I was uh, learning classical piano. And one, uh, one summer we were hanging out and he said, no, dude, check this out. I know you, you're a music lover. There's no way you're not going to love this. And I played uh, Faint to Black by Metallica. Okay. And I was hooked. He was right. I, he, he could tell I, I was going to love it. And uh, uh, I was hooked by the intro and I tried to play the intro on a classical guitar. I was uh, learning how to play guitar. So Metallica became... Uh, more interesting for me and heavy metal because it was all guitars and uh, I was 14 years old when I got the virus. <laughs> what was in metal that sort of caught your attention and got you into metal music? Freedom. There's a certain freedom to it where um, you can express things in a way that for me, it translated as freedom. You know what I mean? Like maybe I felt, oh, it's cool to be able to yell and to be not um, in tune or not, not nothing at all, just like an animal and get away with it. And at the same time, have a very intricate uh, rhythmic section and melodies. But these are, you know, brain, these are thoughts from the brain. But all of this creates something really interesting. If you're into music, uh, you should be able to give it a, if you don't like metal, try again, because there is something there for everybody, I think. So what made you form a metal band? How that did that same come about? year, right after that same summer, uh, I, uh, I was hooked. I was so hooked that my first day in school, uh, I noticed a guy with a, a metal shirt and I went, hey, do you listen to metal? Would you like to have a band with me? Okay. And um, not the first day, but after a few days where, you know, I started to make friends and see and notice that some people were metalheads and some not. I didn't even know there was a name for it. And we, we formed a band and I immediately wrote uh, four or five songs. I wrote my first song on the bus going to the rehearsal at this guy's house. He had, he had a drum kit and uh, I was bringing my <laughs> classical guitar to the rehearsal because that's all I had. And I wrote a song on the way there. So was like Godzilla your first band which became Gojira or did, is this a that band was, that uh, was before Godzilla? That was before and uh, it lasted only one year okay. and we were only rehearsing. So it's not something that, that uh, I never performed live with this band. Okay. Um, Eclipse, Eclipse. So okay. And then, and then the year after I formed another band um, called P4, P4 okay. in French. It means when you when you try to join the army, but you can't because something's wrong with you. That's a label P4. Uh, so I thought it was fun, and it was it was very um, trash and uh, um, thrash and punk. Could you hold the microphone a bit higher, like not not like from here, then just yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It mixes the voice. Oh, you, yeah. Yeah. But now okay. it's good. Now it's good. Is it better now? Yeah. Now it's good to go. So when you started doing like more growling type of stuff, were you first sort of like mimicking others and then sort of trying to develop your own sound or, or how did that come about? So uh, I, I, first of all, I started singing when uh, the singer of my second band uh, couldn't make it to a show. I was doing backing vocals only because I was writing the songs mostly for this band and uh, even writing the lyrics and everything. I was very involved already. Uh, but I wasn't singing. I was not interested in singing. I just wanted to play guitar. But one day our, our singer um, had other commitments and couldn't be there at the show. So I sang the whole show. It was a freaking disaster. <laughs> um, on the way back home after this show, we recorded the show on a tape. I'd lost that tape, a uh, cassette. Right? Yep. And uh, with my friend, my, my best friend at the time was driving and we were listening to the show and he was laughing so hard 
because my my performance was just horrible and the vocals were super loud in the mix too because it was direct uh out of the board mix so it was just like the way it was and i was at first i was offended to see him laugh but then i joined the laugh because it was so bad and at the end we listened to the whole show three times we were dying <laughs> both of us <laughs> so i was it's a good thing to be able to laugh on uh, at yourself you know when you when you try to achieve something um you just have to persevere you just have to keep going and and eventually you could get somewhere but but of course my first show ever was uh, <laughs> just insanely bad so were you losing your voice like all the time in the early days and did it take like long time to figure out the right technique for the growling so that you wouldn't lose your voice it's, uh, you sound like you interviewed the other singers before yeah i have yeah. few <laughs> Yes, um, yes, I, I, uh, have, I had zero technique. Um, now I don't have zero technique, but close to zero, but not completely zero. But at the time it was really bad. So yeah, on the, on our first tours, uh, fast forward years later, when uh, I had a band with my brother and we, uh, uh, we called it Godzilla. And then for two years we did a few shows and then we changed to Gojira, released an album, 2000. Um, the rest is history. Uh, but yeah, on these first tours, um, I would lose my voice uh, quite often. Yeah. So when you did your like first proper European tour, were you already ready as a vocalist, or was it like learning experience for you, stamina wise, to do show after show after show? Because that's way different than performing. I never became a vocalist. I was never. I never considered myself. Okay, that's it. I'm a singer. Okay. You know what I mean? I have experience in. Uh, uh, you know rocking out, melting faces, um, but I'm still a quest uh, to, to achieve singing. Singing is very, very, very hard. It's very challenging. Sometimes I'm at home, I sing, and I think I, I'm great, but then I go on stage and it's, it, it's not great because the, the, the environment is completely different. When you're in your shower and you sing, you have a, a, a direct return of your voice on all the walls around you. And, there's enough space and air for sound waves to travel a short distance and come back to you somehow. The sound waves can travel to your mouth to your, from your mouth to your ears directly too. But when you're in a loud environment and you're yelling into a microphone that is going into a PA, you need to have skills or tricks uh, or techniques to um, to imagine what people hear. And you need to you need to be comfortable with your mix and this and that. If there's a problem, it could quickly turn into a real nightmare, uh, even today, um, at my age and with my experience, I cannot guarantee that I, I'm going to be able to sing correctly on stage. You know? <laughs> Do you uh, have like a specific warm up routine that you follow and how has that changed through the years? So um, I never had a specific uh, routine for many, many years until we recorded the Wheel of All Flesh in 2007 in France and invited uh, Randy Blythe from Lamb of God to sing on one of the songs. He showed up and he said, hey, why don't you warm up before your session with this? Look, I have this tape because I, I think I was asking him some advice. How, how do you uh, warm up your voice and stuff? He said, oh, try this thing. And it's, uh, it's, um, it's a recording of a uh, vocal coach that is doing is doing lessons. You probably know uh, of Melissa Cross. Melissa Cross, the one and only. Yeah. That uh, since then I met her, and I, I did uh, two two um, quick lessons with her uh, before recording Fortitude. But at the time he gave me this recording, and um, to this day, I'm using that exact uh, MP3 that he gave me in 2007. Okay. So, and it's, it was uh, 16 years ago. Are there like some specific foods or drinks that you wouldn't have before the show that you have felt that they affect your vocal cords somehow? And on the opposite side, something that helps you with singing. So I'm sure I can, I can discover uh, more things about that. Um, but I feel what I need before a show and uh, for example, before this interview, I was just slicing some avocado because avocado helps healthy fats. And uh, I like to uh, eat a, a little bit of that or a banana or something that sort of stick to your uh, pipes. Yeah. Um, definitely, I'm not eating for three hours before a show. Um, 
there's a, there's a lot to say about food, of course, and uh, it's it's notorious that dairy is not really good before singing, for example. Uh, I don't do dairies uh, for 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 a long time now. I'm a vegan, so I remember struggling before being vegan uh, to to manage my energy on stage. The energy level was good at first, and then first time I scream, I I would almost pass out sometimes because I'm still digesting. You know, because at the beginning of our career we were opening a lot. So we would eat and then go on stage, for yeah, example. Yeah. This is very dangerous because your body is trying to process the food. And if you want to use your entire body to sing, as you should if you're a singer, there's going to be a lot of things in the way and the body gets confused. And uh, I almost fell, passed out on stage multiple times because I was not done digesting. Okay. Yes. Also, I want to say this on a side note, but since I quit animal products and I eat plant-based only my energy increased by 10 or 100 i don't know because how would i know every time we finish a show i'm still full of energy and i keep going i can i can keep going and going and going and back in the day before i changed my diet at the end of the show I was at the end of my life every and i was young i was 20 you know yeah you 20s. you were in that age that you should have lasted yeah. for a long time dude I, I should be the opposite right yeah but then i changed my diet and now i i can i can go anytime and um even if i eat in the in the in this three hour window it's going to be super light so it's going to be acceptable um but if i would eat cheese or meat or heavy things it's impossible you know so i think um although i don't have the healthiest lifestyle you know i i drink a few beers after the show. I'm a night owl, so I don't sleep a lot. I try to catch up on sleep and uh, naps, but I do my um, I do I do drink a lot of water. Try to sleep as much as possible. These are my secrets that are not secrets. Everybody knows it, <laughs> <laughs> even for non-singers. But yeah, the diet change was uh, crucial in my life. Obviously, you've released a lot of albums with Gojira. Yes. Are there like some specific albums that you could pinpoint where you have taken? most steps forward as a vocalist this is a tough question it's like um yeah magma i would say magma i started to, to embrace uh clean singing you know how uh since the first album there is clean singing in gojira actually in our, in our very first demo the second demo in 97 there's there is already it was very death metal okay very death metal evil even you know <laughs> but um at some point we're like, ah, there was a clean part but just one word clean and then everything ah. um so i thought oh i like that contrast you know so i already at the time but i didn't want to go into the whole chorus you know cheesy chorus or yeah um on every single album i sprinkled some clean parts you know even uh one of our heaviest songs the heaviest matter of the universe there's there's a lot of uh almost theatrical clean singing at some point and on magma uh there's a few parts where i'm really singing towards clean but it's it's really i embrace it more and then and on fortitude i started to go more for that uh, shooting Star and Magma, if you know these albums, Shooting yeah. Star is an example. And uh, the chant, of course, on the new album is, is the perfect example of that too. Although the chorus, if we could call it this way, is just one note, uh, not one sound. And the melody is kind of almost like world music-y. And there's no lyrics, so it's we're still, we're still not in a conventional format, you know? So I have a couple of questions left, and the second last one goes that what were your parents' reactions when they heard that you started screaming your lungs out for the first time? <laughs> Do you remember? Yes, um, my mom was always very supportive. Um, so no matter what we did, she would put her fist in the air and go, go, go! go. She was front row. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she would listen to all our demos and put this one again. You know. Okay, cool. And my dad would be more, you know, coming home from work, tired and, and 
Okay, cool, whatever. You know? <laughs> go go never... go to school. <laughs> exactly. But he never tried to stop us from what we were doing. Okay. And he let my mom uh, buy me a guitar uh, without without agreeing or disagreeing. He, it was his way to support us to let our mom support us. And he made sure of that. He, he, work, he worked uh, really hard. Um, he's still working hard. He's an artist. And he always told me, uh, do whatever you want, but don't be an artist. <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> and here you are today. <laughs> yeah, the three of us, because me and my brother and my sister, with the three of us, were artists. Okay, so she's you... A, she's a photographer. So you didn't ever believe your we father. We did the then. opposite of what he said. <laughs> That's we, normally what happens. No, because he, he he was saying this, but at the same time he was he was giving us uh, the opposite example by his uh, by his uh, you know lifestyle. I mean his life, his dedication. He would wake up uh, at four in the morning every morning and go to his office and his workshop and work all day. And um, so he gave, he showed us that okay, you can make it, but you you have to hard to work hard. Instead of saying that, he said, don't be an artist, but you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. He let our mom support us and and uh, almost coach us at the beginning, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, he, he was never, he never tried to stop. So for that, we were very, very lucky. Last question. Any kind of advice that you would like to give to a like, young metal vocalist who is just about to start their journey? Anything that pops up into your mind? Yeah, follow your instinct. Um, Follow some guide rules, you know, uh, uh, ask questions to other singers, uh, warm up the conventional way, sure, you know, ground yourself as much as you can with your feet when you want to go high and relax your shoulders, that's how you go high, not by doing, by not by clenching and <sighs> trying to go high, no, it's the opposite, you have to make yourself heavy to, to go high, I don't know, like somebody <laughs> told me that one time and I always think about that. Gathered some information, but mostly feel your your throat, feel your chest, feel your head, feel how sounds resonate in your head when you sing, and see how you can change. There's a multiple, uh, there's a big, you know, there's so many things you can do with your vocals, and it's exciting. But if you listen to others too much, especially as a singer, you need to listen to yourself and uh, your instinct and uh, you will find your own way and it's gonna it's it's what's gonna make you uh, original and powerful it's only if you listen to your uh, your own voice and 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 be attentive and, and observe what's happening thanks a lot sense. for this interview of course absolutely thank you very much